Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Hey, Dave. Hey, Tom. What are you reading? Oh, I'm reading martial law. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Welcome to Tom and Dave Read Martial Law, mm. uh, brought brought to you by uh, the one, the only, Mind Freak oh. 555. Oh, thank you so much, Mind Freak. Brought to you by the letter M. Mm. So, for Mind Freak. For Mind Freak and for Martial Law. See, it works and, out. Yep. Yeah. We're, uh, and we're the reading. number five. We're, we're doing this podcast really to encourage uh, reading. And also, for children, uh, yeah. yeah, as a tax shelter. Um, yeah. So, you know, this is all, Get, we can write all of this off because we're doing a public service by encouraging reading. Exactly. We can write a lot of things off, Tom. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's Almost like everything. One, it's like the one, it's the one thing we got going for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, that's it. That's it. Yeah. It's good. That's the only advantage to being yeah. uh, self-employed in this manner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had restaurant where it's like gone out to eat with a friend and been like, can this be a business meeting? Yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, and then you t- you talk business for five minutes. Bam, you got a business. Oh, meeting. yeah. No, that's see, I've already figured out a, a quick workaround to that is you just bring business cards with you everywhere you go. And then just, oh. you just give them to people that you're eating with. And that's it. Boom. Bing, bang, boom. It's a business, business. Meeting. networking. Networking. Ah, I'm going to uh. go. I'm going to go right on my LinkedIn wall about this. <laughs> Folks, what this is a p- psychopaths a do social media updates on LinkedIn. All right. Anyway. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Every now and then someone will be like, so and so friended you on LinkedIn. And I'm like, what the fuck are people doing on LinkedIn? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. All right. So this is a podcast where we're reading uh, martial law, as is probably evident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by, you, there, there are by, many, like, many hints uh, uh, to that end uh, before arriving at this point of the recording. Right. The title of the there's episode, also, et cetera. Yeah. There's three episodes mm-hmm. already. Yeah. Uh where we we where we go through this comic series. And we're we're nearing the end. We're t- we're this is our second to last episode, I believe. I think so. We have one more after this, right? I'm pretty sure. This is episode four. We're covering two ep- uh, two issues of martial law, uh The Hateful Dead and Super Babylon. Uh and uh, this is these are good good ones combined because they're the well, same. They're basically the same narrative thread. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, I I, I guess we should go through it. I forget we we we, we so we discuss the actual comics and yeah. then we um, remind me what the sections are for this episode. There's not much, I think we I think we just freeform it. We talk about the comics for a while. Oh right. And then we we got a cast. Oh that's we right. Well, that's it. the the casting is our only real is our only real section as it were. Yeah. This is a loosey goosey podcast. Um Yeah, it's loose goose. Mhm. <laughs> Some, like a, somebody set that goose free exactly and it is just raining chaos down everywhere mm-hmm. so this starts with martial law going to uh the fa- he's at he's going to the foul play club right and yeah he's, he's like he's um, patrol he's being a real edgelord uh <laughs> yeah i mean that feels redundant you, you look at that yeah, guy you're just like oh yeah of course you don't even need to say he's an edgelord no, he's the ultimate edge lord. He, right, he's their avatar. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and he's it's this area where um, they've sort of like. I'm trying to remember what the last ones were. Well, the last was that, the that last wedding. The last one we did 
was the uh, the takes Manhattan where he faces oh, the right. Avengers, the Avengers who are really just a bunch of nutcases, uh, and none of them actually have powers. Uh, right, so we're hitting these one-off stories. These basically. are these are all very the first. What I'm the the sense that I'm getting is that first pair of episodes we did for the initial I think six issue run of Martial Law was a single contained story um, with themes and junk, and I think the rest of the 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 stuff we're going to look at is going to be way more episodic like you know just yeah. the further adventures of uh martial law it's very serialized you know like comic books yeah um, he has to he has to like sort of reintroduce himself every episode yeah because it, it also seems like, like a page I spent on that there's a lot of time in between these two like martial law was never an ongoing series it doesn't appear so it's just like a okay. bunch of like kind of like one-off mini series like one shot yeah an- the illustrations looked a little different in this one, uh, but that might have just been me. It looked the, uh, but, it looked the same. I didn't check to see if the art artist was different, but yeah, it was definitely the same style. Um, yeah. So he's he's going out. He's uh, you know, it, it's it's this area where it's a new aspect of superheroes, which is that it's like superheroes selling their bodies to mm-hmm. people. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a form of prostitution. To, there, you can beat up. Yeah. On them. Yeah, to wail on them. Uh-huh. Um, he God, I, at least I'm that's, trying to remember. That's what the what the writers of the comic are trying to connect it with in our minds. Anyway, yes, is um, the idea of like the red light district, uh, uh, the sex trafficking, basically. Right? Is he right away going to investigate? He's going a murder. Yes, because there's a um, well, razor I, head. I think what happened. He's just kind of patrolling. So he goes around like there's a superhero in this in this foul play club district there's like a superhero fight club which i would be there every night oh of course um it's just it's like the game pit fighter only it's a bunch of uh atomic uh uh little freaks punching each other yeah um and then he gets flagged down by uh, that spider dude um that the, the for like the web weaver club there's this just wild looking dude who just has a mostly robotic body and it's kind of like a spider body and he runs this little bar um, uh, which is just like, it's like a, you know, an hourly mo- motel, basically. It's one of those right. kinds of establishments. Um, and somebody, uh, some civilian's been murdered in one of the, uh, hotel rooms because he booked time to wail on this guy, this, this hero called Razorhead. Uh, and martial law investigates the crime scene and quickly puts together that what happened was really self-defense like the guy took it too far and razorhead went all razorhead on the guy <laughs> right he's he he's pretty he's pretty cool with razorhead yeah he's pretty chill um, with razor he, he recruits yeah. razorhead because he's like hey my last sidekick got horribly killed at the end of the last uh, uh, issue uh do you yeah. want to be my new sidekick <laughs> but that comes later that comes later um, but yeah yeah i liked his guns his bullets um what were they called the attitude correction capsules that shot razor wire. A razor wire net that then electrifies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the cobweb palace. That's what cobweb it is. palace. Um, yeah, he's got like a little thing behind the bar where you can pay money and sign a waiver to climb up into like Madam Spider's web, and she'll fuck you to death, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. And martial law does it. Right. Um, he's like a regular. <laughs> like he cli- yeah. He climbs up there. She's like, "Oh, nice to see you again." And they fuck around. And then she's like, "All yeah. right." See you next time. He's like, yep. So it's um, it's one of those things that like only other superheroes can withstand it, I guess. Anyway. Right. And Everest is the guy who runs the Everest is bar, a different right? guy. No. The, oh, okay, the guy who okay. runs the bar is the weird mechanical spider dude. Everest is basically oh, right. a pimp. He's like the the guy who is the they call him the agent. But he's the guy who's like coordinating all the transactions for civilians right to come and what martial law figures out yeah fig- martial law figures out that everest paid the dude to to stab razorhead right right because razorhead was working without everest he was he was basically working without an agent um so yeah he was everest we find out sort of set this up to like as a right. warning to other heroes Hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna sell your body for people to wail on, you better do it through me or else, basically. Yep. Uh, this is all though a setup. 
Uh, and what I mean is like a setup in the plot where it, it's leading to talking this, about... This uh, is all going to get to zombies eventually. <laughs> yeah. This is all getting to co- coma or coma. Yeah. Uh, but it's he calls it coma. I think that's, uh, that's but, a real... It's a real Sin City reference. <laughs> yeah. Um, and coma is a cemetery where basically all the superheroes martial law killed... Uh, you know, have been buried. It's and it's a it's a yeah, it's a cemetery the size of a city. Yeah, and uh, some toxic waste falls in, and that you know what happens: mm-hmm. toxic waste plus uh, bodies equals zombies, superhero zombies. They talk about. I like he talks about Pa who um, embalmed them, and how like he just embalmed some of their heads. So some of them come out with like. Like, the um, embalming clearly, like, preserves some corpses better than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the first corpse is um, the Black Scarab, uh, who, I guess, yeah, martial law killed. Yeah. Um, and I think, okay, it's two plots happening. is The bodies are coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, martial law is uh, hunting down Razorhead, right? Yeah. He tracks down Razorhead. They fight. Um, they kind of come yep. to a, a, a bit of an understanding. But then Everest and the rest of his goons <clears throat> beat uh, Martial Law. He covers, cover yeah, him, he in covers him in the, the shaving foam. Yeah, he covers him in his web. Yeah. And then, well, uh, it's, it's specifically shaving foam, according to... Right, yeah. I love that Razorhead is shaving-themed. Yeah. Oh no, it's someone else. Someone else hits the foam actually. So they're just like they're just like shaving themed in general, I guess. I don't know, man. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty but, sweet. <laughs> yeah, so they they decide to go bury him alive in the uh in cemetery. The, in the city cemetery. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. all it's all very edge lordy. Yeah, but I do like where this is heading. It's basically they go to bury him alive. Meanwhile, the bodies are coming up. Mhm. Um, Everest was also like the sidekick, I want to say. He was the sidekick of, the Black of, Scarab. of Black Scarab. So like his plan all along was to re- use this toxic waste to reanimate Black Scarab because he misses him. Right. That's it. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. It's, and so it becomes a dorks. situation where it's little adorbs. Yeah. Black Scarab just zombies the shit out of Everest, which turns him into a zombie. Um, and it becomes a situation where... It sides don't matter. It's now them versus zombies, which is kind of how Razorhead and um, uh, uh, Martial Law uh, hook up. And I really like how the zombies work. I like that their theme, their 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 motto is "Go with the flow." Yeah, go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, which makes a lot of sense. It's yeah. a good m- zombie motto. Yeah, like what else um, are you gonna do? It's you're a zombie now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that they've realized. Like, these reanimated corpses are basically saying, like, there is no hell. Morality is an illusion. Yeah, so they they want to... We don't have to do anything. They want to spread the good word to the living. It's like, well, you don't have to have morals. None of it matters. (laughs) Right. So I like that they have, like, a philosophy. Yeah, they're nihilists. Um, Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Because they would be. Yeah, it's true. Martial law p- bulldozes a bunch of them and sure with does. the graves. This, yeah, there's some gnarly there's, zombie there's stuff. There's some stuff I want to talk about, and I, th- I think the main question I have for you is, do you think it's gotten away from them a little bit? <laughs> this, <laughs> like where this the point where this comic ends up? Because what ends up happening is uh, Martial Law's uh, girlfriend, Lynn, is brought back to life. Uh, and, and her death, uh, it was, it, you know, obviously she, was, she got the shit fridged out of her, but it, it was also part of this, the, the theme of the original six issues. And it was like, it was, a, it was a, she did get fridged, but it was like a big point of the story and it, it was about like heroism and and the collateral right. damage and etc and like er, the, the the pieces from her uh thesis that she was writing um and like how he was conflicted because she like hated everything that martial law as martial law stands for it was this really complex emotional 
thing that was, uh, you know, in, in all of its uh, faults and problematic parts, was like a really thoughtful uh, deconstruction of like the myth of like uh, like a soldier's death and 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 like like a good death or like dying gloriously and like heroism and things like that. That is right. all reduced in this comic to his girlfriend coming back to life in uh, just a ridiculously sexed up superhero costume. Uh, and then he has to uh, overcome his guilt and fucking shoot her to death with a gigantic cannon at the end. Right. So it's because basically. Because he hates superheroes more than he loves her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because she becomes a superhero. That's true. So maybe it maybe maybe it is still on point. Like maybe it is still on theme. I but think it, it yeah. seemed really funny to me that like the end point of this new zombie storyline is like his girlfriend comes back to life so that he can say, "I'm done feeling guilty about you," and fucking atomize her with a with a Tesla right. laser cannon. Having learned nothing. <laughs> learned um. nothing. <laughs> You could argue, I don't know where this is heading, so you could argue maybe this is like part of the, you know, the character arc. He's going in the wrong direction here. It could be, but, a, it could also be like a Gremlins 2 thing. That's like kind of the vibe I'm getting, where they're just like, is, the more they do, they're just like, fuck it. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, they're like making fun of themselves at this point. Honestly, I think that's more it, because like, they've sort of said what they needed to say. So all these It is very redundant comics, at this point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like there's there's kind of an Avengers group in this, um, and it's like ah, you kind of just did that. It's uh, yeah, right. We're we were like so much so that if you watch part of the fun uh, of the art in in these comics, and I think we've talked about it in the previous episodes, is a lot of the panels are just so lush, like they're crammed full of stuff, so you can sit right. there and just look at all the details and little hidden jokes and stuff like that in all the panels, but they're reusing a lot of them in this so you're seeing like the same references to batman and superman and thor that right. we've seen in previous issues so it's like we're yeah it's we're in like what is this the eighth and ninth comic of uh, Ad adventures of martial law it's Something really like feels that. like beating a dead horse in a lot of ways because <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah we covered all this <laughs> kind of why i don't mind the zombies because i yeah. was like because what else, else are you gonna do, do? yeah yeah, Might as well return the to the living dead, this shit. Yeah, it's a good way to bring back old villains. I, yeah, I, it was true. like the reanimated corpses of people he's defeated who are now mad at him. I like Pa's uh, body art that, that comes to life. That was a hell of a drop. So, yeah. like, I just assumed that, like, Marshall's parents would be dead. Right. Because he's such a little edgelord boy. Not only are but they no. not dead... The uh, his dad's the mortician of the cemetery city. He just we learn that martial law just kind of pops over there, not infrequently, to visit with his parents, and also that his dad's a fucking maniac. Yeah, he's a beautiful <laughs> maniac. He makes artistic sculptures out of the corpses he embalms. It makes sense. Martial law grew up playing with corpses, basically. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're really having fun. I will say, the further they get away from that initial six-issue story, they're not bothering to make Marshall like a real person anymore. They're just no, really no, no, no. going hard into the idea that he's just a slobbering maniac. And so there's yeah. stuff like, yeah, he grew up in a cemetery city playing with corpses. <laughs> like, yeah, what? Fuck it. <laughs> fuck it, why not? Yeah, it, re it feels like... Um, I I, this, I I can't think of a good comparison. It's basically they told the story. Yeah, they've, and they've now said everything like, they wanted well, to shit. say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's like, well, we, we let's do another one. Okay, what's this one going to be? Ah, uh, zombies. Sure, sure. They do have yeah. the. Uh, they basically bring in the Justice League in this one, um, but it's like the they're. <laughs> they're corpses. They're corpses, and it's specifically like the Golden Age. Uh, so it's like. Um, 40s era justice league and they call them the jesus right. society of america but so the the freshest thing the comic this this comic does is 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 uh sort of deconstruct a little bit of of that sort of uh 40s era like great war propaganda basically like yeah the they do the thing that people talked about propaganda yeah 
Yeah, where people are like, wouldn't Captain America be super racist? And they're like, yes, he would. He sure would. Yes, he would be. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah, there's there's Asian tourists and German tourists at this, like, museum where their embalmed bodies are treated like like statues. Like, it's like a wax museum, mm-hmm. but with their corpses. And they have their chain of, train of thought being like, oh, my God, what is the enemy doing here? Yeah. And then they flip out. It's I, I really like that idea because they it, – it, first of all, it's interesting to sort of take apart the – the the myths around that uh, era, not just about superheroes, but also about World War Two and America's involvement in it, and the West's involvement in it, and like the kind of the unpleasant and uh, I forgive the phrase the inconvenient truths about it. So yeah. it's like uh, it's 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 deconstructing that myth of like the greatest generation being, and then they they use it to sort of point out like, yeah, no, the the war was really bad, even though it it we kind of really hold ourselves up as like, this is our most heroic time. It's like the worst time for the world. Uh, right. the, our heroics were very uh, paper thin. Um, there's a lot of consequences. There's a lot of way that, that we don't talk about. We, we, we lionize the heroes and, and hold up like the heroism of war and stuff, but we don't talk about the victims. Um, yeah. We don't talk about the shady ass shit like America recruiting a bunch of Nazi scientists. Uh, right. Giving, and he says, yeah. like, we're not that type of heroes or yeah. something like <laughs> yeah. that. Where yeah. it's like, yeah, their heroics were just a skin deep, basically. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then the, the other aspect of it is the fact that all the heroes in this museum, it's like literally their bodies full of embalming fluid. So, yeah. like, they, they've just been preserved. Um, their actual corpses are on display. So it's like we, it's like literally we will not let them die. So it's like right. we keep going back to these uh, even when the comic was published they were antiquated. So like man 2022 this shit is super antiquated but we're still going back to that boomer era. You know it's the whole make America great again bullshit. It's like right. we won't let this myth die and it, it it's like uh, that that stuff was interesting to me. Um so that oh, was yeah. cool. Oh, that was very And it was also fun to have uh, a fun excuse to have a nude uh, Silver Age Flash uh, jacking himself <laughs> off at the speed of light. Right. Uh, he learns to <laughs> vibrate his genitals so fast that so he nobody can't can see, see them. them. And then so he can be naked. Dave, I could talk for 15 hours about Tomcat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was Tomcat supposed to be? I like, think he's Batman. But oh, like, that's funny. <laughs> He's just a fucking drunk idiot in a cat yeah. costume, and he's just hammered 24-7. <laughs> it's pretty great. It's so fucking good. Like, yeah. not even he knows why he's dressed as a cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's Yeah, it's... It, man... When was this made as opposed to like, yeah, Watchmen and The Boys? Because it's all very much. It's all around. This is around the same. This is contemporary with Watchmen, late 80s. Um, and okay. this might even be early 90s at this point. But like the original right. was late 80s. So it was around the same time as Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns. That sort of the, the, the deconstruction of the superhero myth comics that were coming out. And like the first Judge Dredd comics. Right. Because, yeah, H2O Man giving a hand job, or giving a dolphin a hand giving job. Giving a dolphin a hand job. Um, yeah. Like, that's very much like the boys. Yeah. Um, I love the Green Lantern guy. <laughs> yeah, he makes nothing. a blue mousetrap, and he goes, ooh, a mousetrap. <laughs> Not a bit worse. Beats the shit out of him. They show, yeah. they show in flashback, basically, all the... None of these heroes really had any powers, it seems. Like, they were just, like, basically right. USO actors. Uh, like, right. boosters. Um so it shows them being com- incredibly ineffective on the front lines and all this other stuff. So, and it, it culminates with them basically getting killed by the mafia because they were on TV talking about how they had were like conquerors of crime and they, they'd crushed the underworld. So the mob just murdered them all. Uh, right. And there's a very funny full page splash where it's the mob gunning down pretty much uh, analogs of most of the DC universe. And then you have the green lantern guy with this huge blue magnet. I mean like the magnet's not working. Their bullets must be made of wood. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Solid. (laughs) 
<laughs> but we are getting that's super Babylon. That's super Babylon. Record. But it, yeah. it bleeds together because basically the zombies overrun the cemetery and they uh, run into the city and they get into the the superhero yeah. museum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Hateful Dead kind of ends with Lynn coming back mm-hmm. um, and being like, "You should also become a because like Everest gets killed and then like um, the scarab just wears him like a like a like a I don't know, like a little belt buckle. Yeah, he's got him, him. He's got him on his hip, his little head on yeah. his hip. It's like that head you carry around in God of War. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, <laughs> so this this idea him they to want to make belt so he could give him gameplay tips. <laughs> There's a great um the airplane part where the zombie pilot crashes an <laughs> yeah, airplane. Just crashes it. Yeah. So the idea is the zombies are trying to make other people zombies but yeah. to help them. Yeah. They want to and f- um, free them from their inhibitions basically. Yeah. And so Lynn basically tempts um martial law and the first section at Ends with him seemingly blowing his head off. Mm-hmm. And then we learn he shot himself through the cheeks. He fight clubbed himself, yeah. He fight clubbed, yeah. Uh, and so the second half is kind of him and, and um, Razorhead joining forces more. And they go... Black Scarab is the main bad guy. He's the main throughout. zombie, yeah. I'll, yeah. And we, I, I like that we learn Lynn that... is his second. Yeah. <clears throat> I like that we learn that his basically scam as uh, when he was alive was it, like he and uh everest were just running a protection racket right <laughs> that's yeah it. they're all just scumbags yeah they're all just fucking scumbags and we get it but it's it's still kind of funny i don't know <laughs> oh yeah for sure so yeah part two is begins with the jesus society society of america which is great but it really did feel a lot like we, the we, takes manhattan we covered this yeah it, well it and also we covered a lot of it with public spirit uh, and this one even yeah this one even has golden age public spirit who just looks like captain america with the square shield yeah uh but yeah, 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 we, yeah. we it's it's the redundant stuff it, it's know, the it's, same it's the ineffective avengers yeah it's the thing that we've been doing now since like i'm sure before this and up to the new doctor strange which is like we're we're it's it's just funny to see it uh in this thing this comic from like the 80s or 90s where it's like yeah we're obsessed with this the avengers show up and they get their asses kicked you know mm-hmm. uh they did in like mystery men right isn't that the premise of mystery men mystery, yeah like, the greg kinnear gets killed and then they have to yeah it's it's what if the what if superman dies mm-hmm. and the b team is left yeah so I don't know. It's it's just interesting to see like that always felt like a fresh take, but it's been around for so long. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so like I again, that's why it's like it's I, I I really enjoyed it, but it was very much like okay, you're running out of ideas. Yeah, here. it's the same. They it, like we said, it feels like in their first six issues they said everything they wanted to say, so now with these subsequent installments, it's just kind of having fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, the, the do do we ever solve the zombies? I assume that's for next time, for next issue. Like it, it, it this ends with basically him blasting Lynn. Uh, yeah, they right? sort of they kill a bunch of them. Uh, the the they start to you remember they have that bit with Suicida, who's who keeps coming back to get his ass beat. Uh, um, yeah. Where like the the cops are showing up and like de-zombifying people basically and re right. and reinterring them so it ends with like they're getting back this stuff is getting back under control so right i, I think it's as this is as solved as the zombie problem is going to get right they kind of skip ahead don't they in the yeah 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 once he once um, he <laughs> musters up the courage he needed all along to fucking blow up his dead girlfriend mm-hmm it's this this run was yeah th- there's fun stuff in it but there's also like it's a little homophobic um mm-hmm. lynn it's- lynn comes back and it's very misogynistic she basically just like a black scarab just like fucks her in front of him and it's like this whole thing it's like okay right. guys like all right <laughs> no, they very much ran out of ideas yeah it's it's what are we doing it's, yeah it, it, there's they they did the yeah they did the thing the message 
Um, and now they're just sort of going places. And like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and they're doing some of the stuff they were making fun of. It's like, all right, guys, like, what are we, what are we doing? Right, I don't know. Right. It's a 30-year-old comic. It's a 30-year-old edgelord comic, so. It, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I can't be too surprised that there's some fucking problematic shit in it but what are you right do? and like this the zombie stuff it's just like okay well this isn't really a comment on anything not really not really it's it's a fun idea it, they're really it's yeah this is really just jazz like it, they're really it really feels like they're just having fun and kind of giving very surface level obvious uh comments on society that they've already points that they've already made pretty much although yeah. I, like i said i did enjoy them specifically talking about the golden age and, and uh, world war two era stuff uh, like that stuff. Um, but it was still sort of included in their initial idea in those first six issues. So I don't know. Yeah, it, it definitely, I feel like we've peaked at the previous issues The yeah with the, with the other Avengers. Yeah. Um, that the, the takes Manhattan was really funny and really fun. Um, and this, it feels like they're running out of gas. Honestly, what I would say, what, what, what was great about these was the zombie art was pa, the dead bodies, the, the graveyard stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's when it was at its strongest. Um, and then it sort of, like, it really, like, I almost wish they didn't introduce any more superhero shit. And it was just the zombie stuff. It did, like, it, it's almost like they felt the need to uh, be that satire again. Right. And to bring back, like, but they didn't have enough to say. Yeah, it's like, we get it. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I really liked that take on zombies is, like, they're trying to help us. It's, it's a philosophy. It's, like you said, they're nihilists. Yeah. They don't, um... They're, they're like they're like a student union a group like aggressively trying to recruit freshmen yeah exactly we got some stuff you should read <laughs> um yeah it's yeah i don't i don't know i, I had a thought and it froze in its tracks so no, um, i'm sorry it's fine it's all fine but yeah, yeah i think this the, i okay i remember what i was gonna say the zombie stuff was fun and i really liked um, this, I don't necessarily love the character design in, in these books, but I really, sometimes they, they really do, do really cool things or right? like they have a, a really great idea. And I, I really like the design of Razorhead. He's just gr yeah. grotesque in all the right ways. <laughs> well, he's perfect because the last, who is the last guy that was his kill a ton, two? kill a ton, kill a ton. Like, I love that. It's these, just these big weirdos. Yeah. Razorhead. Um, I, I, I like the sympathizing with him because they basically, he's basically like, do you want to become my assistant? Mind you, my last one was horribly killed. And he's like, I don't have many, I don't have too many employment like, options. Yeah. yeah. Look at me. Like, this is, this is what I had, had had to do is like be, you know, sell my body to people who wanted to beat me up. So yeah, like I like sympathizing with this big goon who's just like, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not employable. Yeah, I have I a, I have a, a living. gigantic razor sticking in my brain, so I don't make the right. best decisions either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like the idea of I, I yeah I really liked the idea of this section where the they're not trying to be street thugs; they're just trying to make an honest living, and they they don't have many options. Yeah, they don't have any skills outside of being superheroes. <laughs> so it's like, what do I it's, what do I yeah. do? It's very much I. Is this a commentary on oversaturation of superheroes in general? I think it's on like. Oh, go ahead. Finish the, that thought. Oh, just the idea that like comics at the time were probably putting out so many, and nowadays it's the same with movies, where it's like, uh, like there's so many fucking superheroes, and it's like there d isn't the need for this many, and so they don't have much to do. Like that's the idea of the society, is like there's so many that it's like. They they have to resort to gimmicks and and like every every uh like yeah it it just it, like it, that must be that must be a commentary on just superhero comics in general. I think it's right? it's partially that, and it's also and I believe we discussed this on previous episodes. It's veterans, like how veterans right are treated. right. 
Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's probably uh, an aspect. Certainly, I just double checked this. These two series, uh, sort of one offs, came out in 1991 and 1992, respectively. Uh, okay. And there was a pretty big boom in the early 90s, at least in Marvel, I remember. A little bit in DC, but I wasn't reading DC as much, of really introducing a lot of new characters in right. the first half of the 90s. So that could be part and, of it. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, even if it wasn't meant to be, it is. Like, you look at the movies, superhero movies now, it's just like, you can't just do a superhero movie anymore. No. <laughs> like, you, you, you can't just do, like... Guy becomes a superhero. He fights crime, uh, beats up the bad guy, and wins. Like, no one would go for that anymore. It has to be fucking wild. Yeah, it's got to um, be really outside the box. Yeah, and it's going to get more and more meta and weird as we go. So we're kind of hitting that point where it's like... Like, you look at, I don't know, Morbius, which is like, <laughs> that's just your that, that's just your straight up like, yeah, I became a hero and it's kind of a curse and I beat up the bad guy and it ends and everybody was like, that is lame and they weren't wrong. <laughs> Listen, Dave, it's the summer of Morbius. That's true. It is. We're, we're in it. it. Is. We're living in it now. Yeah. By the way, the, the panel in this of the mob shooting everybody. Yeah. Uh, if you look at it, there's, there's just a, a cartoon rabbit. There's a Bugs Bunny. There's a Mickey Mouse yeah. on, the, on the left, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. That's that's silly. Mm-hmm. This is really like, again, the, I, I say this, these two issues really popped out for their art more than more than the writing. There was some good stuff here for sure. Yeah. Um, do we want to cast? We need to cast some of these. Whew. Some of these shits. Um, all right. So who do we got to cast? We should probably cast Black Scarab, right? Yep. Razorhead. Razorhead. Um, we got to cast. We should probably cast Everest. And I don't, I don't think we need to cast all the, because there's so many no, other there's superheroes so many. they run into. Like, I, I don't think, think we need I to cast the Jesus I think that's a solid, society. maybe Pa, maybe Pa. Oh yeah, Pa we should probably cast. R- Razorhead, I could see very much as a Vinnie Jones type, right? Vinnie Jones, Batista. Yeah, Batista would be the more, yeah, because Vinnie Jones is getting up there a little bit. Well, so is, uh, so is Batista. Batista's in his 50s. Oh, okay. Uh, well, then, it's, yeah, I just, the, it just seems similar to the way he portrays Drax, sort of this guy who really is designed and trained to do one thing, and he d- he's sort of trapped by that. He's like, well, I don't necessarily want to be like a, 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 a violent maniac. Like, what if I yeah. want to be quiet and have friends and a family? Exactly. Anybody who can play badass who can be a sweetheart, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, unexpected Black's... turn for Razorhead too, because uh, oh yeah, you you think of him, you you assume he's just going to be, and because he, he is, I, I said it's a grotesque character design. He is grotesque. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good. That was the one thing I didn't expect because they yeah they set him up as like just another goon. There's yeah. so many of these goons. Yeah, just another guy that martial law is going to have to be all edgy and beat the shit out of. Yep, uh, Black Scarab. Uh, could Crispin Glover play him? I think Crispin Glover. Um, I was thinking Dark Horse. Uh, Michael Keaton. Ooh, yeah. Michael Keaton could play Pa. Michael Keaton could be Pa. I think he might be better as Pa. Yeah. Yeah, I think I could. Really that would be. See and that would. Pa. That would be fun. Just the implication there. So yeah. It's like, yeah, the older generation of superhero. This is has begotten martial law. And, uh, yeah. and plus, I just want to see Michael Keaton making flesh sculptures in his basement. Oh, but I want to see that more than anything. So, yeah, Black Scarab then. Uh, I said Crispin Glover. Let's see. Let me let me take a look at him. He's very he kind of looks like the monarch, which doesn't help. Yeah, he does a little bit. <laughs> Um, like he's very cartoony. He's very angular. More, he's very lanky. Um, yeah, like a creepy lanky person. I think would be good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Crispin Glover would probably Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover would probably work. Honestly, yeah. Fuck it. I think yeah. you nailed it. Um, Everest. Hmm. Oh, man, so he's like a Robin type. Uh, yeah, he's he's a he's a adult now, but. Uh, and yeah. he's he's, kind of, he's slimy, like he's a sex trafficker, basically. Right. Um, basically, this is hard. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of guys like Michael J. Fox types. 
Like Michael J. Fox is obviously too old. A little bit too old, yeah, uh, but that would be the a right, younger him. That would be the been, right yeah. vibe. Yeah. Uh, some like a yeah, man. I'm. This is tough. Who? Okay. Uh, this is an interesting. Uh, this is this is all right. Follow follow me here because this is uh, this is sort of dovetailing uh, from my Michael Keaton suggestion. Marlon Wayans. Marlon Wayans. Because Marlon Wayans was originally cast as Robin. And the Tim Burton movies, um, I can see Marlon Wayans. Marlon doing Wayans this. has done dramatic stuff before, and all right, yeah, I, I I think Marlon Wayans could do it. Maybe maybe be cool to see to see Marlon Wayans try to be a bad guy. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like Crispin Glover could play literally any of these too. Yeah, Pa as well. <laughs> he could play any of these characters. He could play Razorhead. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> he could play. I think it, Black Scarab is that's pretty great. That's a pretty great pull. Chris Van yeah. yeah. Solid, solid, Dave. Nice work. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Listen, he's always kind of on my mind. Honestly, yeah, he's haunting. He's haunting me constantly in some way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's never. He never strays far from my thoughts. No, why would he? Mm-mm. All right. Well, I think that's it for casting, I think right? you're right, Dave. I think you. that is correct. All right. Uh, we're, we'll get this movie made in no time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm on the phone with our people. My oh, my, pe- I'm having my people call your people, Dave. And okay, then good. They're yeah, going to get on the phone with their people. Let's touch peoples. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll gently touch peoples. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll and make it happen. Somebody will notify Crispin Glover. He's probably listening. He's always listening. He's always listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man. Any other last thoughts on this? No, I think this? it's it for me. It's running out of steam. Like it's. Like I'm it getting, is. It's still got. It still has some fun stuff here. Yeah. But message wise, writing wise, I would definitely say like they're thinking of cool ideas that feel like they could have belonged earlier. That, that they're almost like, oh, and what about this? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, that would have went good be earlier in the other thing. I think if they had relied more on zombies and just done like a straight up zombie story and didn't think about the. Um, the superhero stuff as much and just used it as a way to bring back some old villains. Like I, I just, I don't mind that basic idea. Like, I think that would be fun in any, like imagine like a, well, Batman doesn't kill the bad guys, I guess, but like imagine a version where of anything of Punisher or something where zombies show up and all the zombies versions of their enemies, he has to fight them again, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. That just seems fun. Yeah. So I, can get down with I that. don't. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. I just I like that as a concept. I just wish they had done done it. Like uh, I mean, that is what this is all about. But it's they it deviates. It deviates a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just. It's. Uh, it's starting to feel um, more juvenile the longer it goes on for me. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was always kind of, it was always a little juvenile, <laughs> like from Jump. Right. But it is clear, like, this is an idea that you'd only do for so long. Right. Yeah. This is not, because they made their point. So now it's just like, yeah, we get it. Yeah. It's like a TV series that r- runs a little too long, it's, you know, where it's, it's uh, like, oh, you had a couple seasons in you. Yeah. Tops. Yeah. It feels like Tim Robbins in Team America the corporations with their corporations you know it's right, like, right right yeah 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 we got it <laughs> like we, yeah. we got it <laughs> yeah there's just not much it, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> it's it's what i tweeted a long time ago is you either um you either die twin peaks or you live long enough to see yourself become lost yeah where it's like yeah if you overstay your welcome it it suddenly uh, people realize like oh yeah you you didn't have that much and that's fine yeah. you don't need to have you know exactly it had this stayed I think had this been a ten issue series where they worked in a little of the stuff from takes Manhattan into the original story um, it's not their fault because they probably hadn't thought of those things until later you know uh, but I think this all could have been combined into like a really strong limited series mm-hmm. uh, but, and, and that, you know. that was the initial concept too so right 
I guess they're just bringing it back for like I don't know. We'll see. Like there's there's still enough fun stuff in this that I'm not you know. No, I'm enjoying reading. It, yeah, for sure. I'm totally looking forward to reading the next episode and seeing what the fuck happens next. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that'll be our, I, I know, believe, last episode. I know Pinhead and the Mask show up eventually. <laughs> yeah, I think those are uh, like side comics that we yeah. won't get to. Ah, uh, bummer. But we could on our own free time. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that. I know. I, I, know. I, don't, I don't do anything unless I'm going to monetize it somehow, Dave. Of course, of course. Why would I? Why would I do that? Yeah. Got to make, yeah. I'm on gotta that grind. Money. Yeah, got to do those tax write-offs. Mm-hmm. It's all about the tax write-offs. <laughs> uh, shit. All right. I think we're done. I think we are, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mind Freak. Thank you so much. Mind Freak 555. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope people are enjoying this series. We have one more left. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I, I am enjoying reading these um, still. I remember I talked about that at the start of this, mm-hmm. having not read a lot of comics. Uh, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun to just read a comic. And I, yeah. we've, we've mentioned a bunch of times, but this is totally, very easily available digitally. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't try to find a physical copy. I don't believe it's in print, so you're going to yeah. spend a lot of money on that if you do. Yeah. If anybody's interested, look it up. Yeah. Look it up. Yeah. Look up comics. Google comics. Yeah. They're like still movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty neat. Um, and also neat is our Patreon patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed uh if you go on there for just five dollars a month you get access to a bunch of exclusive podcasts like tom and jeff watch batman fox Mulder is a maniac star trek the next futurama and spiel boys mm. we watch movies with our patrons every friday night as well and yeah there are tiers where you can uh have custom podcasts made we got a new one coming up soon and it's gonna be fun so keep your keep your balls keep your balls out for yeah it. keep your balls to the ground yeah, um, keep them. Yeah. yeah, keep them peeled. Keep your balls peeled. Uh, we also <laughs> have a store. Uh, head over to gamefleetemployed.com. You'll find a link to our Teespring store uh, where we have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs. You can get on t shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things. So check that out. Mm-hmm. You goofs. Yeah, and remember, get just from the, the balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cup <laughs> your hands <laughs> to your balls mm-hmm. and listen and into yeah. the wind. Yeah, if you press your ear against your balls, you can hear us. Yeah, you can hear the ocean if you shove your balls into a seashell. <laughs> you can hear Crispin Glover whispering. Yeah. <laughs> Sh- shove your balls into a seashell. Yeah, the, the, the sound of the waves crashing against the shore, that's, that's Crispin Glover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see those footprints, uh, that's where Crispin Glover yeah. carried you. Uh, we talking about i don't know this is it's done yeah. we're it's over the episode's over okay 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 goodbye bye <laughs>